Now we're going to come back and take a look at some C-sharp variables. Now this section, we're not going to really have any coding in it, but it's important that we go over the different types of variables that C-sharp is going to offer us. So this project that we are going to create now, you can just kind of keep the source file aside as a reference, just in case later on you need to. Just go back and see what kind of variable will be good for a certain situation. So let's practice again by doing the File, New, Project. And we know that we're going to be selecting C-sharp, Windows, empty project, and the project name, we'll call this variables. And then we'll select OK. Now just to get a little bit more practice in doing this, the, the name of your project right here, variables, right click on it, slide down to add, add a new item. The new item that we're going to add is this code file, and I'm going to select this view so we have a little bit bigger icons. We can select between the small icons and the large icons. So I had the large icons back up. So we have this code file and we're gonna name the code file, hmm, I'll just call it like maybe vars. vars.cs and then select add. Perfect. So now we're gonna take a little bit more practice coding the skeleton. So code it using system class Okay, so I named my class var. Now you'll notice that it doesn't really have anything to do with the name of the C sharp source file or the name of the project. It doesn't really matter. I'm just naming this class var just as my reference so I know that this is where my program is going to begin in the var class. The only thing that really matters is that I have my main function stored in here. This is the only thing that really matters is that I have this. So now I have a program that will execute. And to prove it, I'll select Control and I'll select F5. Here we go. So now let's declare a couple of variables. And I'm going to start with the ones in the integer type. And just to kind of show you also, comments are exactly the same in C Sharp as they are in Java, as they are in C, C++. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to call this section integers. And here are the different integer data types. The first one that we're going to talk about is the smallest one. And this is the byte. So the byte data type, and I'm just going to give it a name. So now I've declared a instance of a byte data type. And I'm also going to write this down. So we're going to use these comments. And the values that byte offers us is 0 to 255. And also, I'm going to tab over. It occupies one byte of memory. And let me close this output window so we have some room. All right, I'm going to come down to the next line. And then we're going to declare another one. And this is going to be called sbyte. And you see if I push the S button, it's going to come right here and it's going to actually ask me, is this what you want? So I can just be like, all right, S byte, call it my S byte. I apologize if I spell anything wrong. Values of the S byte is between negative 128 all the way up to 127, positive. And the amount of memory that the S byte takes up, it's going to occupy one byte of memory. And you may also notice that I forgot my semicolon right there. Those are two integer types. The next one that we're going to talk about is the short data type. And we're just going to give this one a name. Within the short data type, it's going to allow us to have negative 32,768 all the way up to positive 32,767. The short data type is going to occupy two bytes of memory. So sort of keep these bytes in mind when you're declaring these variables later on in your program because the name of the game is to try to salvage as much memory as possible so that your programs will run efficiently. And not only that, but your program will run on a system that might be using other applications that are really big memory hogs. So then your program will be able to work very well. So the next one that we're going to talk about is the U short. So we have U short and we'll just call this, I don't know, same as before, my U short. The U short is going to have these values is 0, 2, 6, 5, 5, 3, 5. So we're going to have 65,000. And the reason that we're going to have that many is because you can see, for those of you that know about programming and data types, this U is actually short for unsigned. So unsigned basically means that it's going to have all the positive numbers and it's not going to allocate any memory for negative numbers. So if you know that you're going to be using a sizable amount of integers and you're not going to be needing any negative numbers, you can allocate this so it's going to be more efficient. 
the number of bytes that the unsigned short occupies is the same as the signed. Moving along here, I'm sure many of you are familiar with this, the int. So we have a regular integer. So the values that the, that the typical integer is going to allow us are negative, and this is kind of a big number. So we got negative 2 million-ish all the way to this 2 million-ish. And I'm going to slide this out a bit so we can view this. So this is what the regular integer is going to have. And as you can see, I again forgot my semicolon. Now be mindful that this integer gives us more values, but this integer also is going to occupy four bytes of memory. The next one that we're going to take a look at is the unsigned int. So u int, and we'll just do my u int. The values for the unsigned int are going to be 0 all the way up to shy over 4 million. And I forgot my semicolon again. And the number of bytes that this is going to occupy is going to be 4. So we have these. And now there's two other integers that we're going to talk about. One of them is the long. So we'll do long. OK, so in here, the values for the long are going to be, and this is long, so <laughs> negative 9, 2, 2, 3, 3, 7, 2, 0, 3, 6, 8, 5, 4, 7, 7, 5, 8, 0, 8. And I'm reading this off of a sheet of paper, so if I set it and typed it differently, do what I said and not what I typed. We're going to have that all the way up to that big number. And the amount this is going to occupy are 8 bytes. OK, so now we're starting to move down the list. So hopefully you guys are copying this down so you can reference this later. The next one that we're going to take a look at is the unsigned long. So this one's going to be really fun. So this is going to be u long. And u long, we'll just call this my u long semicolon. This is going to give us the values 0 all the way up to. So we have 0 to a really big number. This one is going to occupy 8 bytes. So these are all the integer data types that are available in the c -sharp programming language. So after that, let's take a look at the bool. So we're going to have a Boolean data type. And this is just going to be just like everything else. It's going to be bool. And I'm just going to call this my bool. And those of you that are familiar with the Boolean know that the Boolean is only equal to one of two things. It's equal to either true or false. So we can say the values of this are true or false. And also, the boolean well, is going to occupy one half a byte. OK, we're done with the bool. So now, I'm going to make another comment here where we can put floating point data types. So we're almost done. We're going to talk about floating point, and then we're going to talk about ASCII characters. So once we get to this floating point, the first one that we're going to recognize is the float. The values of this is going to be approximately plus or minus 1.5 times 10 to the negative 45 all the way up to plus or minus 3.4 times 10 raised to the positive 38. All right, that may seem confusing, but the important thing to note is that the float is going to occupy four bytes of memory. So next to the float, we have the double, my double. And uh, this is going to be, and we could see that this double holds a lot more values than the float. So it's going to be the values are approximately plus or minus 5 times 10 raised to the negative 324 power all the way up to plus or minus 1.7 times 10 raised to the 308 power. Keep in mind that even though this data type delivers us a lot more data, it also occupies twice the amount of memory. And there's also one more that we're going to discuss in the floating point section, and this is called the decimal. So we're going to call this decimal my deck. The values for the decimal are approximately plus or minus 1.0 times 10 raised to the negative 28 power 
all the way up to plus or minus 7.9 times 10 raised to the 28 power. Now one also other thing to note that I kind of skipped on the float and the double that I'm going to go ahead and add. For the double, the double is going to have seven significant figures. So the double is going to have seven significant figures. I'm, I'm sorry, the float's going to have seven significant figures. The double is going to have 16 significant figures. And the decimal is going to have 29 significant figures. So we can also see that the decimal data type is going to occupy slightly more memory. And this is going to occupy 12 bytes. So this is the end of the floating point section. One more section that we're going to muscle through before we continue is the ASCII characters. And this is only going to be two that we're going to speak of, and then we're going to be moving on. So the first one is going to be the good old char, which is a single character. And the values of this are going to be any, any Unicode character that is 16 bits. And it's going to occupy two bytes. The last one that we're going to talk about is a good old fashioned string. We're going to be using this quite a bit. And the string is going to hold exactly the same as the character except for the string is going to be a significant amount of characters. So it's basically like a whole array of characters, which we'll talk about a little bit later. And the bytes that this is going to occupy is going to be dynamic, depending on the size of the array. OK, so these are the data types that uh, C Sharp has to offer us. Save this source file, file, save all. And we're going to come back in another one and get to some more programming.